Hi everyone. In this course, I'm going to show you how to create monochromatic diagrams only in Rhino. You don't need to use any other program. So we'll take something that looks like this, and then if we go to monochrome view, we can turn it into that. And you can use any color you like. And again, you don't have to take this to any other program. And all you have to do is just adjust the visual settings. So if I type in options, right? You see, we have all of these toolbars here. If I click on view down here, right? So view right here, I'll make demarcations. And then I go down to monochrome right here, right? See, all these are collapsible. So I just click on monochrome, right? And then on monochrome, I want to first adjust the main settings on monochrome. So I, you need to make sure that you select it, right? And so I'm going to highlight things. So just pause the video and you match these settings. So first off, your background color needs to be a solid color option, right? So if you select here, you want to select solid color, right? And then I'm using white. You can use any background color you like. So I'm using white. And then ground plane settings, you want to make sure that it's off, that you have no ground plane, OK? So that's really important. So that's off, OK? Shading, we don't want to shade anything. These are off. I'm putting Xs, right? Those are off. And then for color, right, we want to say single color for all objects. So if I go down here, you want to make sure you select single color for all objects, OK? And then you select white or any color that you like. Same thing for back face settings, OK? And then you do single color for all back faces right here, OK? And then shading, you keep that default. All right, so I'm going to scroll down, so we're going to lose this. So just make sure you remember these settings here, OK? So I'm going to just clear these, and we're going to scroll down. OK, this part's very important, all right? So for visibility, this depends what you want to be exposed when you show these things, OK? Let me actually move to the side so you see what I'm talking about. This is more than enough. OK, so we do not want to show curves. So this is optional. I'll put a circle for optional. You can show hidden lines. You see these little dashed lines here. It's, I'll zoom in. But it's your choice if you want to show hidden lines or not. Show edges for sure, because you need to actually show the edges of this, like the internal edges of your geometry. Show silhou silhouettes for sure. Show, show creases. That's up to you. These are all optional. The creases, seams, intersections, optional. Lights, no. Right? Show clipping planes. I will do a separate video for that. You can have it checked for now, but a separate video. But that's it. So primarily, uh, these three right here, you should have checked. It's optional if you want creases, optional if you want seams, optional if you want inter inter intersections, and also optional up here if you do hidden lines. OK? So make sure you have that. And then I'm just going to go down more here. Uh, now, lighting scheme, very important. We're going to change the lighting scheme, and we're going to do ambient occlusion, OK? Very important. So I think uh, this lighting scheme now is, I think, scene or default, but we want to change it to ambient occlusion. Very important, OK? So make sure you have those checked. Very good. Let me just get out of this. Next thing that we're going to adjust is our objects, right? So under objects, we're going to adjust our curves and our lines and our clipping planes and definitely our shadows, all very important, OK? So uh, if we go to objects, right, uh, on here, uh, you actually don't need to adjust anything. So this is optional. You don't have to do that. So for objects, just pretend you can leave that all to default. Now, on curves, if you want to show curves on here, again, I don't think you should, but if you do, right, then you want to make sure that you're you're using a color that you want for your curve. So single color for all curves. Make sure it's like a very thin line weight. So one is the lowest, right? That's for curves. Now, if you want to do lines, this is the most important out of everything on here. So just really pay attention. So we want to adjust lines, right? Let me let me just scoot this over here. OK, this is super important. So again, hidden line color usage, right? So hidden line color usage, 
you want to see if you want to show this is optional so if you want to show your hidden lines you need to pick a color for it so use a single color for hidden lines on the drop down menu i'm picking a gray color and i'm giving it a width of two because if you give it a width of one it's going to be very hard to see so i'm giving a width of two edge line color okay so this is anything that's not a border so that's like all of like your internal lines right you see here all of your internal lines that you see is basically your edge lines that's not going to be a silhouette definitely make it one and then again same thing single so you want to do a drop down menu and make sure that you do single color for all objects right all edge lines excuse me silhouette okay so silhouette that's what you're going to make thick right so that that's like your thick edge outline here that's your silhouette right so that uh, you want to increase it to two three four five whatever your preference is and then intersection line color again you want to make that one okay that's the most important so let me just show you what happens if i adjust it okay so you can see it in real time so for example uh silhouette line color usage if i change that to black do you see how this changed to black here right you see that or let's just change it back to blue but let's make it really thick so instead of two do you see how do you see how thick it got right now it's gross right so that's why i keep it like you know between two to four I'll do three for now. You see, like that. And then uh, I got edge color, keep it one. If you make it any thicker than that, it's not good. There's gonna be no hierarchy. So just keep it at one. So again, the lines portion of this, super important, okay? Now, uh, clipping planes, I'm gonna do a separate video for this because this is a completely different process. But if you're gonna use a clipping plane in this, you need to do different settings, which I'll make a different video for. Uh, but so just, we'll just skip this portion. But again, I'll make a separate video for that. So just ignore that. Shadows, really important, okay? So for shadows, we actually wanna make everything, we wanna make everything on the lowest settings because the, mon the monochrome view actually takes up a lot of memory and we don't need any of this stuff, okay? This, again, you can make it, you know, if you wanna have the shadows a little uh, smooth, that's fine, but for sure, these here, put them on the lowest settings, okay? Do not make them high because it, it takes up way too much memory and you don't need any of these settings to begin with, okay? Uh, but now, this is very important. Down here, your shadow color. So if you notice, because I'm doing like a monochrome style, I'm making everything blue. I'm even making my shadows blue. So I can change my shadow color to blue, but I don't want to have the shadow too intense because if I make it too intense, again, we're doing ambient occlusion for lighting, right? So it's gonna darken the areas that are like in corners or stuff like that. So let me show you when I make it 100%. You see how like this now gets like really shaded blue right here? You see that? Let me just show you. You see that here, 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 right? So it's a matter of preference. If you increase the shadow intensity, it's gonna look like one of those diagrams where you have like a rendering overlaid with line work, that's how it's gonna look like. So if you do uh, like maybe 50%, you know, you're gonna get some of the shadows still in there, right? I like to stay around 19 to like 25%. If you do zero, you're gonna have no shadows. It just look like white, you see? It just look like a white diagram, you see? So if you like that, you can do that, but there's gonna be no shading. And if you have like very complex curved geometry, then it may not look that nice, but if you have like orthogonal geometry, then you know it's really a matter of preference from there. So, if I recommend if you have curved geometry, definitely you know have some shadow in there, some shading in there. You still look, it'll still look like a pretty you know monochrome rendering or monochrome diagram, excuse me. But if you don't and you want to look like very sharp, clean lines, then just you know make it zero and it'll look like this. Okay, and then. That's it. That is literally it for your settings. And, you know, again, maybe you're changing your mood. Maybe, like, you don't want to do blue anymore. You want to do black. You just go in here and change for on your line section here. Just change all the colors to whatever color you want your line colors to be. So maybe instead of this, you want them to be magenta, right? Magenta is, like, my favorite color uh, for, like, diagrams. Uh, let me go here just to show you, you know? Magenta, this is hurting my eyes because it's on white, right? And then maybe like, let's say you wanna change uh, the background, right? Let me go back to my shadows. Yeah, it's, uh, let me change this also to magenta. 
And then on my background, uh, let me go, sorry, excuse me. If I go click on monochrome, my background, I can maybe make like the whole thing like a true monochrome, right? Uh, and go here uh, and change this to like a very light magenta. Like that, you see? And that's if you want to do it. But I like the blue settings, so I'm not going to save any of these settings. But I like the blue instead of this. So I'm going to do cancel. Okay? Now, when you save this file, it is so important. There's a lot of things that you should be aware of, okay? You have two options. You can do view capture to file, okay? If you do view capture to file, do not do transparent background. I repeat, do not do transparent background. And keep the scale at one, okay? If you increase the scale, right, or if you increase the resolution, which is okay, it's going to make all of the line weights look the same, okay? So like what you see on here isn't really what you're gonna get. It's gonna, you're gonna get something that's a little bit more crisp for sure, but the shadows are kind of gone, right? So what I do is I keep everything native here, okay? Uh, and I'll click okay, right? And you, you wanna save PNG. Save the file as a PNG. Do not save it as a JPEG. Save it as a PNG, I'm repeating. Save it as a PNG because the color, calcula uh, the color calculation that you're going to get from a PNG versus a JPEG is going to be different. So save it as a PNG, all right? You can also do view capture to clipboard, right? And then do okay and it basically, let me bring this down to one. And do okay and then just save it. Paste it to, you know, paste it in, Photoshop, paste it in InDesign, paste it in Illustrator, whatever you like. Just make sure you embed it or save it as something else so you have a file. I like to do view capture to file, but I like to make sure that it's actually saved. So if you want to be on the safe side, to be honest, if you want to be on the safe side, just do view capture to clipboard, you know? So just do view capture to clipboard. So I'll do, let me make, just make sure that's one. I'm on the viewport and just do okay, okay? And then let's say like I'm on InDesign, for example, or Illustrator, but I'll do InDesign for now, right? I have this laid out in my InDesign, right? But let me just make a quick duplicate right here. And let me just get rid of this. And you just paste it, right? And here it is. See, it's massive. So the thing is that, you know, the vast majority of us have like at the very least 1080p screens, right? So you have a 1080p screen and then you're fine. Like, if not 4K, a lot of people have 4K. So your screen resolutions are gonna handle this even if you do take a screenshot of this because like I'm even downscaling this right now, right? And I'm gonna show you the difference. So it's really up to you. But you see, very clean. And you can like lay this out to whatever you like. This is just very quick. I'll show you, I'll show you the final like export, right? But you can lay it out like that, right? So let me, let me go ahead and show you the final exports of this. Okay, so right here, what you see in my screen are the final exports, okay? So obviously, if you see here, this one looks just like the screenshot from the actual Rhino screen, right? So this one was a view capture to clipboard. What you see is a view capture to clipboard at the original viewport settings. I did not increase the resolution, nor did I increase the scale. I just kept it as is. So you see, it looks exactly like it. But if I zoom in, but again, I mean, just pay attention. I'm zooming in like 300, 500%. You're never going to zoom in that much in real life, right? If I zoom in, like, you see, like, it's not as crispy, you see? But again, I'm zooming in like 300, 500%. Not even 300. I'm like, right now, I'm like 600%, right? If I get out of full screen view, let me show you. Like, right now, I'm at like at 400%, you see? That's not, you're never going to zoom in that much. Like, people are going to view it maybe like at most this, this much, okay? So... That's something to take into consideration, okay? This is view capture. Doesn't matter if you do view capture to file or view capture to clipboard. If you keep it at the current viewport, at the, at the resolution that it's at, right? Uh, and keep the scale at one, then you're going to be fine. And this will look exactly like what you get. Now, if you either do view capture to file or view capture to clipboard and you upsize the resolution, 
this is how it's going to look. So I'm going to go right here. So do you see how everything is a little bit darker? It's more crisp. Let me just show you. So this is view captured a file or view captured a clipboard where you increase the resolution on the Rhino settings. This is if you keep it the same native viewport, what you're looking at, this is if you increase. So you see here, like it's just dark, everything is darker, right? But I mean, the resolution is much higher. I'm zoomed in 250, still looks crisp, right? But again, you're not gonna zoom in that much ever. You're gonna be like this, you know? So it's a matter of preference how you want it to look. Someone might actually like this, right? Whereas someone might like this more. I know it's very like nuanced, but you know, I, I'm pretty sure you'll understand, you know, if you're a designer, like these things matter. This is very helpful in a presentation where you're presenting like a large sequence of diagrams and you don't want to take it into Illustrator and do all the line work or take it into to Photoshop if that's your, work, your workflow. You can keep it all native in Rhino and just take a screenshot or do view capture to file and then boom, paste it on your board or paste it on your sheet and you're good to go, right? It's such a, such a good time save. And again, I'm going to make a separate video for doing sections, okay? So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please uh, leave any questions or comments and subscribe and like so that we can help this channel grow. Thank you.